Il me fait maintenant plaisir de céder la parole à Madame la Principale et Vice-Chancelière de l'Université McGill, Suzanne Fortier. Prior to her appointment at McGill, she was President of Natural, Resources, Na Natural Sciences sorry, and Engineering Research Council. Madame Fortier. Merci, merci. Quel plaisir d'être ici avec vous pour cette belle, pour cette belle célébration des nouveaux lauréats Trudeau et euh, dont euh, Myriam Denov, une de nos collègues à McGill. C'est vraiment un, un événement euh, extraordinaire, alors je suis très, très heureuse d'en faire partie. Je pense que nous célébrons aussi le travail extraordinaire euh, de la Fondation, sa mission euh, et aussi euh, sa capacité d'avoir bâti des liens aussi euh, profonds avec la communauté universitaire. Alors, bravo à vous tous. Le, the fellowship program uh, that we're celebrating today recognizes and supports some of Canada's most creative and accomplished researchers. What a great thing to do. We share your values and are inspired by them, values that promote excellence, audacity, and social commitment. And I think your, va your vision really challenges and encourages outstanding scholars, as well as the next and new generation of scholars, to use their talents to tackle some of the most difficult and important challenges that we are facing today. Nous sommes aussi très heureux, je dois dire, de voir à la tête de la Fondation Morris Rosenberg, une personne qui compte parmi les grands sous-ministres de la fonction publique canadienne, une personne admirée de tous et qui reflète parfaitement les valeurs de la Fondation. Alors, bravo à vous. Félicitations aux lauréats. Et je vais maintenant passer la parole à Chris Manfredi. So I'll ask Chris to come to the podium. Chris is professor of political sciences and dean of the faculty of arts at McGill University. Merci. Merci, Suzanne. Uh, C'est avec un grand plaisir, beaucoup de fierté que je suis ici aujourd'hui de vous présenter Miriam Denov. Dr. Denov is professor of social work and holds the Tier 1 Canada Research Chair in Youth, Gender and Armed Conflict. She is also an associate faculty member at the Centre for International Peace and Security Studies at McGill and the Université de Montréal. And she is a member of the Centre for Research on Children and Families at McGill. An exceptionally accomplished and respected scholar, Dr. Denov is an internationally renowned expert in the area of human rights and dignity, whose particular focus is on children and families affected by armed conflict. She is known for outstanding leadership and her productivity as a scholar, applied researcher and practitioner, and for her long-standing commitment to public and scholarly dialogue and debate on issues of national and international importance. Her Trudeau project, which will explore the lived realities of children born of wartime rape in northern Uganda, reflects this commitment. This multifaceted project will both advance far-reaching scholarship and policymaking and will promote the Trudeau Foundation's core themes. Dr. Denov's considerable leadership experience speaks directly to her ability to successfully complete a multi-year project involving multiple stakeholders. A cornerstone of her work has been leading international and national partnerships and multidisciplinary collaborations with researchers and practitioners. On parle très souvent des, du valeur de recherche collaborative uh, dans le, le sud global, mais les partenariats comme ceux que Dr. Deneuve a réussi à créer sont relativement rares. For instance, in her CETA-funded project on child soldiers in Sierra Leone, where she was principal investigator, Dr. Denov led a team comprised of Canadian researchers, national NGO staff from Defence for Children, and groups of African children who were also co-researchers. The partnership proved to be enormously beneficial, both in a professional sense and in intercultural and intergenerational ways. Her Trudeau project will continue such important collaborations involving local NGO partnerships in northern Uganda. Miriam Denov embodies the core qualities of a Trudeau Fellow. She has proven leadership capacity that transcends multiple boundaries, 
the boundaries defining traditional academic disciplines, the boundaries partitioning domestic and international issues, and the boundaries separating theory from practice. Je vous présente Dr. Miriam Denoff. Thank you. And today I'm going to go for the old fashioned way, no slides. Um, thank you for the introduction, and um, it's, uh, thank you for all of the support that, uh, that you have given me. Um, I'm really honored and privileged to be here today, um, and particularly grateful to the Trudeau Foundation for uh, not only supporting my work, but also for providing me with the opportunity to be part of the Trudeau community. Uh, je tiens à remercier particulièrement Maurice, uh, Jennifer, Pierre-Philippe, Elise, José, et Nora pour uh, leur accueil chaleureux. So as um, Dean Manfredi mentioned, my research focuses on children uh, and, and war and the impact of war specifically on children. And over the last 15 years, I've been uh, tracing the lived experiences of children, uh, looking at their realities before war, during war, and then in its aftermath, and trying to explore some of the long-term effects. And my work has uncovered um, experiences of, of, and stories of violence and deprivation, but they've also uncovered amazing stories of resilience, of survival, um, and of the capacity to move forward in the absence of violence. And this work has taken me to a variety of different contexts, uh, Sierra Leone, Sri Lanka, Colombia, and also work here in Canada. And my work has been focusing on former child soldiers and how children enter the world of armed violence, how they live through the experience, and, and then how they return to their communities after that, and, and what does that actually look like. And just to give you a sense of the complexities of this issue, I wanted to bring forward the, the, the words of a young former child soldier that I worked with in Sierra Leone who um, was abducted at the age of eight um, and was in an armed group for several years. And when I spoke with him, he was 15 years old. And he describes his experience. He said, the rebels attacked my village and I was separated from my parents. They threatened to kill me if I made any attempt to run away. I didn't want to die, so I joined them. I was afraid of being around all these dangerous men with all kinds of weapons. I had no mom, no dad, sister, or brother. I was alone for the first time in my life. And as time went on and the killing happened every day, we all became used to it. After some time, the violence became part of me. Now that the war is over, my community refers to me as part of the evil ones. They don't love me anymore. They despise me now. Wars are dramatically altering the lives of children around the world. And as I think this quote illustrates quite clearly, children are victims of conflict, they are participants in conflict, they are witnesses in conflict, and in many cases, they are all three all together at once. So my Trudeau project is building on this past work, but exploring uh, an invisible population of children affected by war, and these are children born of wartime rape. And this topic is not an easy topic, it's certainly not a glamorous topic, and it's for this reason that I'm particularly grateful for the foundation, to the foundation for having the vision and the commitment um, to support this work and, and take it on. Now, sexual violence in armed conflict is, is increasing and has been increasing. Um, it's transcending countries and contexts. It's being used as a weapon of war to terrorize local populations as a form of gendered power relations, as well as a form of ethnic cleansing. And there's been a historical silence and denial around sexual violence during war. It's been gaining increasing attention given the prevalence and given the devastating impact on victims. And yet, there is still this population and this intergenerational realities that we know very little, little about, and particularly children born, born of rape. And, and yet, in the last decade, uh, tens of thousands of children have resulted from mass rape campaigns in armed conflicts around the globe. So my project is looking at the issue, in particularly in northern Uganda. And during northern Uganda's 20-year civil war, uh, an estimated 60,000 children were abducted into the Lord's Resistance Army, or the, the, what I'm going to call the LRA. And uh, of these 60,000 children, approximately 30% were girls. 
Uh, these girls were forced into marriage, repeatedly raped, and many bore children. Not all of these children that were born um, survived LRA captivity, but we do know that there are thousands of children born of rape living currently in, in northern Uganda. We know very little about what's happened to these children. Um, we have anecdotal evidence, and this evidence has pointed to uh, the realities of stigma, violence, uh, social exclusion, and abandonment. And we also know from, not only from the context of Uganda, but from other contexts of, of children born of rape, that later in life, um, they're often prevented from accessing education, employment, and health care. So the Trudeau project is going to be conducted with a local NGO called Watiki Gen. And this uh, NGO is actually made up of former um, women who have been um, captives in the LRA. And also a Canadian NGO called uh, Children and Youth as Peace Builders. And what we are going to be doing is um, exploring the perspectives and experiences of these children. But we also know that children cannot be studied in isolation and that children are within families, they're within larger communities. So we're also going to be looking at the perspectives of family members and, and the larger community to assess what their views on are the issue and, and ways to move forward. Um, we're going to be using interviews and focus groups as well as arts-based approaches. And children who have been born of rape are, like I have done in the past, going to be actually part of the research team. And our goal is to really uh, look at some of the post-war challenges, but also some of the opportunities, and to um, look at the ways in which local resources can be strengthened to better support these children and their families. Now, I know as I talk about all of this, it seems very far away from our everyday lives in Canada, um, except the fact that through migration, uh, increasing numbers of war-affected populations are now living in Canada. And in the last decade alone, in Quebec alone, um, eight of the top source countries for accepted refugees have been from war-affected nations. And this represents about 34,000 people. So, so many of the uh, war-affected youth, particularly, that I've been working with here in Canada have talked about the difficulty in getting psychosocial support and uh, help in terms of uh, when, when they need it the most. And these young people have talked about the ways in which professionals, whether they be teachers in their schools, whether they be social workers or healthcare professionals, that these professionals, from their point of view, tend to be ill-equipped and unprepared to uh, deal with the many issues that they're bringing forward. So it's my hope that the project not only sheds light on the realities and, and, and formulates ways in which we can better support these children, both in northern Uganda and other contexts around the globe, but also importantly here in Canada. And I, I, I know this topic is a difficult one, and I, I want to end with a, a message of hope. And I think that there's often an assumption that um, children affected by war are destined to a life of violence, a life of trauma and traumatization. And this is simply untrue, that um, youth survive and in many cases thrive um, and are key contributors to their communities and raise families and often end up in, in very um, important leadership roles. So I want to thank everybody for coming today and particularly to the, to the foundation. Um, I want to congratulate uh, Jason and Evan on uh, their amazing work and just wanted to thank all of my friends, colleagues and family who uh, are here today. Thank you very much.